This is Oklahoma Inside Out, a weekly broadcast of Cimarron Alliance that focuses on the issues, culture, and people important to LGBT Oklahomans. And now, here is your host for Oklahoma Inside Out, Scott J. Hamilton. Hi, and welcome once again to Oklahoma Inside Out. I hope that you tuned in last week to hear us talking about the 2013 Equality Run with Josh Sauer. Some some really exciting news there, and it's been wonderful seeing how many people are planning to come out for that event the end of June and who are already starting to train. So if you missed it, go back and take a listen because it really is worth catching and knowing all about that great event. Today is a very special show because we're beginning an occasional series on Oklahoma Inside Out called Oklahoma Treasures, where we will be visiting uh, with people who truly, truly have made outstanding commitments and changes for the good in Oklahoma City and well beyond. And our first guest today is someone who I know you'll want to hear. We'll be back to talk with him and find out just why he's an Oklahoma treasure after we take a look at news making the headlines this week. Dozens of prominent Republicans, including top advisors to former President George Bush, four former governors and two members of Congress, have signed a legal brief arguing that gay people have a constitutional right to marry, a position that amounts to a direct challenge to the Speaker of the House and reflects the civil war in the party since the November election. John Huntsman Jr., who opposed same-sex marriage during his 2012 presidential bid, was just one who signed the brief. The document will be submitted this week to the Supreme Court in support of a suit seeking to strike down Proposition 8, a California ballot initiative barring same-sex marriage and all similar bans. The court will hear back-to-back arguments next month in the case and another pivotal gay rights case that challenged the 1996 Federal Defense of Marriage Act. And in more marriage news, in a Monday op-ed piece in the Washington Post, the lead strategist for Mitch, Mitt Romney's 2012 presidential campaign complained that the Republican presidential candidate didn't lose the election because of the technological gap between the candidates, but instead because of his candidates' negative stance on social issues, particularly like gay marriage. That's news making the headlines this week. As I said at the top of the broadcast, we're beginning today a special series, an occasional series within Oklahoma Inside Out. You know, we we focus on current events most of the time here. We look at culture, at issues, at people um, who, who are really doing great things every day. But it's important to us to highlight the work of some individuals who really stand out because of their contributions, not just to our community, but to equality in general. And I'm really honored that our first guest in this series is a man that I have tremendous respect for, for his work, and just because of who he is. It's my pleasure to welcome to Oklahoma Inside Out today a true Oklahoma treasure, Richard Ogden. Richard, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Scott. Very happy to be here. You know... You you are a prominent attorney here in Oklahoma City. You are a, a university regent. You are a very high-profile individual. You've been involved in so many different civic uh, efforts, civic organizations to to raise money, to raise awareness, to to help out so many causes. I guess one of the first questions I have for you is, what was it within you? your your person, that allowed you as a young man to really take some major risks, particularly with your career, to stand up and really fight for LGBT equality in Oklahoma. That was really gutsy. What what pushed you in that direction? Yeah, well, that was, that was, uh, you know, 20, over 20 years ago, really, when, uh, when this started developing. And my father had just passed away. Uh, he was a sitting district judge, and he had stood for a lot of uh, issues in terms of civil rights uh, during the '60s, and uh, so I, you know I was I was at a place in the time when people were uh, turning uh, 
to me and to others and saying, let's, let's try to make a difference. And I think it was, it, I can tell you that I did. I went through the struggle of thinking, wow, how is this going to affect my career? Sure. And, uh, but then at the same time, I had, I, I, you know, was prayerful about it too. I, I, I just knew that, um, that all things would work out, uh, well in the end. And, and, and I think that they have. And, uh, so I, you know, I think that within me personally, I felt like, uh, you know, God had given me the the abilities to uh, to provide some leadership, to organize some people, uh, to really try to to move the ball, and to help people um, along that path. I found that when people uh, feel like that they're doing good. And that they are, and there's some traction, and they are moving the ball. Man, they will work hard. You know, I, I think that that there's this um, inertia that exists until someone pushes, and at that point, it just really starts to snowball, doesn't it? It does, yeah, it does. And that you know, that was the beginning of Cimarron. That was it started out as the Cimarron Alliance Pack. It was a Cimarron Alliance group actually, and uh, it was. The genesis of it was out of a, of a race where uh, the lesbian and gay community at that time, it was just lesbian gay, that, that transgender really hadn't figured into the, into the mix too right. much. Um, uh, and uh, so the, the lesbian and gay community got together and, and, and worked for Ann Simak to get her elected. And there were about 20 or 30 people that got together, raised about 20... Twenty-five thousand dollars for the lion's share of her campaign. Well, that was a lot of money twenty years ago. That was, it? that was, and and then that that kind of was the genesis of the pack. It's so interesting to see how one seed will will grow into a forest, and sometimes a very different direction than we first intended it. Uh, let's talk just a, a moment about your family. What what kind of support have you had from from your family? You know. Um, my both my father, mother and father have passed away. But before I, and I like to tell this story. I I remember as a, I don't know, I was thirteen or fourteen years old, you know, and I was figuring out that that uh, my my desires were not for women. That, that really they were for men. And uh, I grew up Southern Baptist. And so I went in wasn't one, one night. I was just very cheerful. Uh, went to my father's bedside and I said I said dad I think that I like men and he said well what do you mean by that you know do you like you know because you know like your brother-in-law like me or how, what do you mean and I said well no I mean I think I, I, I like men in a different way and, he, and I said well you know I was so fearful that I was going to go to hell that uh, you know all those things sure, sure and my dad just said son God loves you just the way that you are. And, uh, you know, so. Wow. I mean, yeah. that sets the stage for yeah. tremendous, tremendous support. It now, did, yeah. You, you said that you, both of your folks have passed away. Today is actually your mother's birthday, isn't it? Actually, the 28th is, okay. is my mother's okay, birthday. So yeah. yeah. Well, it makes sense that you're here with us today. We have a lot more to talk about with our guest, Richard Ogden. When we come back after this break, stay with us. Hi, I'm David Macy, a board member of the Cimarron Alliance, and I'm asking for your help. We work every single day to make life better for gay Oklahomans, now and for generations to come. But we can't do it without you. Please consider making a gift of just $20 a month to the Cimarron Alliance and be a part of our march toward equality. Visit www.cimarronalliance.org today and make your pledge. It's a gift you can feel good about giving. It's a brand new year and the Oklahoma Observer has a brand new look. We asked our readers what they wanted and we've given it to them. Now the Oklahoma Observer arrives in your mailbox in a convenient magazine format. That means more room for more stories that are important to you. What's more, our online version at www.okobserver.net is updated throughout the day so you have instant access to the news, analysis, and in-depth reporting that you just can't find anywhere else. The legislature will soon be in session and you can count on the Oklahoma Observer to be your eyes and ears at the Capitol and beyond. If you are a progressive Oklahoman, you owe it to yourself to be informed about issues and legislation 
that impact you, your family, and the LGBT community. Visit www.okobserver.net today. Our only agenda is to provide critical news to critical thinkers. Welcome back to Oklahoma Inside Out. I'm Scott J. Hamilton, and our guest in studio today is a true Oklahoma treasure. We're talking with Richard Ogden. Richard, I should say, first of all, thanks for for stepping over the boxes and everything. This is a a week that we're moving uh, from our office in Mesta Park to the new uh, Summerlin Alliance LGBT Equality Center. And that, that's a major step forward, uh, certainly for Cimarron, but, but for the entire community. And this goes back to something we were talking about a moment ago. When, when you provide a little leadership, when you, when you ignite that spark, other people want to become a part of it. Looking at where we, we are in terms of a, a community today and where the community was 20 years ago, what, what are some of the things that you're most happy about in changes? Wow. I mean, you know, I have to tell you, um, you know, looking, looking at it 20 years ago, I don't think that I didn't see the community this mature. I didn't see uh, the level, I believe the level of equality would be here at this level. And, you know, it's, it's almost exponential. Uh, and uh, even in Oklahoma, a place where where many times people, uh, you know, certainly feel the social pressure uh, against them. But uh, I am just so proud. I'm so proud of Cimarron. I am so proud of all the work that you've done, all the work that this board has done, all the work that that uh, so many volunteers have done. But this is exactly what what's getting ready to happen on, when when the when the Equality Center opens. That is the goal that so many people work for. Yeah. And, and, you know, um, uh, it's just very, very satisfying to see that all the hard work uh, that was put in even, even before uh, uh, the Holocaust Remembrance Exhibition was brought to Oklahoma, uh, you know, at the, the, all, all the hard work of Randy Tate and, and the others with regard to Stop Hate in the Hallway and the Genesis there, to see this, uh, and to have a place where people can come and know that there's some answers and uh, know that, that, that it's okay, a safe place. A safe place. And, and then just the presence is exactly what so many people envisioned and why they worked so hard. And so I think it's just a tremendous reward to all the volunteers, all the people who gave, all the people who worked so hard over the last uh, – 20 plus years and, and I feel like I'm probably the most fortunate guy in the world because I am just here right place right time uh, by that I I can't take any credit for this and I was talking to some young students yesterday who were helping us paint and get things ready and one of them came up to me and had a tear in his eye and he said thank you for doing this and I said but this is not me this is you the, you're you're spending your time here, and we talked about the people who have spent their time writing letters to the city council, who who have written checks, who have uh, baked things for bake sales, and, and it's all of those pieces. And I bring that up because one of the things that I'm I'm most impressed with you in the work that you do, you just do the work. You 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 don't expect to be. Um, publicly rewarded for that and yet when you step back you you can look and see that your work has made a substantial difference uh, but not just in the quote community but in the lives of individuals and when you go to bed at night that's got to be a good feeling Richard I mean I I think that uh, it's rewarding to 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 see the growth to see what happened and it's uh it's it's tremendously rewarding to see as what you mentioned the younger people uh following suit and um i mean there was a debate at one time uh within the simron movement it's like who how how do we get some young leaders in you know all this hard work that we've done who who is going to you know uh take the ball sure, and, and because sure. because we were getting tired you know um 
and uh, and to and to see you know people like Chris, to see people, uh, all the volunteers, just it's tremendously rewarding for me to see the um, the safe uh, group at UCO, to see the the gate uh, uh, movement and different uh, organizations at the other universities. Uh, you know, that's that's what is so rewarding to know that I played a part. People before me as well right. played a part. Um, and I've often said that, you know, uh, people like Bill Rogers were the people who uh, were had a machete and they were having to cut the path through the rainforest. And they had to slice it. And uh, then, then other people were able to walk on that path and tread it down. And then this next generation is able to pave that path. Oh, what a great analogy, yeah. And then eventually it's going to be a super highway, you know. And, and that's, I'm honestly looking forward to the day when, when you and I are not even necessary because equality is real. Yeah. We have a lot more to talk about. Our guest today is an Oklahoma treasure, Richard Ogden, and we'll be back after this. Hi, I'm Lorette Taylor, past chair of Cimarron Alliance. I joined the board because I believe in the vision and the work of this organization. We're working every day listening to the concerns of our community and helping to address those very concerns. I hope you will consider supporting Cimarron with a gift. Even $10 a month will help. Working together, we really can achieve equality for all gay Oklahomans. Please visit www.cimarronalliance.org and make your gift today. It's a brand new year and the Oklahoma Observer has a brand new look. We asked our readers what they wanted and we've given it to them. Now, the Oklahoma Observer arrives in your mailbox in a convenient magazine format. That means more room for more stories that are important to you. What's more, our online version at www.okobserver.net is updated throughout the day so you have instant access to the news, analysis, and in-depth reporting that you just can't find anywhere else. The legislature will soon be in session, and you can count on the Oklahoma Observer to be your eyes and ears at the Capitol and beyond. If you are a progressive Oklahoman, you owe it to yourself to be informed about issues and legislation that impact you, your family, and the LGBT community. Visit www.okobserver.net today. Our only agenda is to provide critical news to critical thinkers. Just before the break, our guest Richard Ogden laid out a map for the future. And I, I what you said is so wonderful that eventually that path toward equality will be a super highway. One of the things that, that I um, struggle with when I hear young people talking about how how good things are today, there's no question that, that great, great strides have been made in the last two decades. Um, to I mean, when I was at OU, there was no LGBT group. As a matter of fact, there was a lawsuit against the university by some kids who wanted to have a gay group. And as you point out, like SAFE, they've had to move to a bigger meeting space because they have 100 people show up for a meeting. But what I'm, I'm always cautioning people about, and you know this with your work around the state, that when you get outside of Oklahoma City or Tulsa or Edmond or Norman, life is very different. And while we're not out to save the world, wouldn't you agree that that's an area that we have to be particularly aware of and, and trying to address the needs of those folks who, who have no community and may, in fact, be the only gay people in a particular town? You know, I think that it's, it's interesting because Richard Florida, you know, wrote a book about this um, and um, in terms of the creative culture. And I think that it's very important that all communities in Oklahoma uh, recognize, uh, particularly rural Oklahoma, that unless they're willing to be more tolerant than their sons and daughters, their favorite sons and daughters, will have uh, very few choices but to move to Oklahoma City, to move to Tulsa, to move to a place that is more welcoming. Yeah. Or, or, or worse, to New York, Chicago, Detroit, just to get away. Uh, and and yes, that's a. That not only is that a drain of talent, 
it's also a drain of a precious resource that once it's gone, it may never come back. That's exactly right. And and so, you know, I think that I think that we need to look at how to uh, how to discuss this with with communities. Do you want your favorite sons and daughters leaving? Because you do have favorite sons and daughters that are lesbian, that are gay. Now, you have a choice. You know, how, how, do, you, how do you want to address that? Mm-hmm. We're not trying to say you have to do this, but, you know, your actions have consequences. They are, and, and, you know, at one time, uh, the same thing was being said about Oklahoma City and Tulsa. People were moving from Oklahoma City, moving to Dallas. Sure. At one time, they were saying it about Dallas. And people from Dallas were moving to Houston. At one time, they were saying about Houston, you know, people were only in uh, only gays and lesbians existed in New York and San Francisco. Right. And before that, it was go to Europe. Yeah. 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 So it's you know I think that I think that the understanding of the fact that you have uh, a broad LGBT community and that everyone needs to live in the same world together is something that that is now moving uh, more and more and more you know to to the smaller communities and I hope I really hope that 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 becomes more of a understanding of the importance of tolerance otherwise you know it's going to be a difficult time for smaller communities I think those are, are very wise words we're, we're just about out of time Richard but before we go I, I want to say personally but on behalf of so many people we wouldn't have this broadcast we wouldn't be able to do the work we're doing we wouldn't have the equality and freedom that we have even today were it not for you and your hard work and people just like you. So thank you. Well, I want to say, uh, you know, just as you can't take the credit, I can't take the credit. And because there are a lot of people that have done that. We've been speaking today with a true Oklahoma treasure, Richard Ogden. And somebody, if you don't know, you really ought to. I'm glad that you were here with us today, and I hope that you'll be with us again next week. Tell your friends about this program because we are here to serve the needs of 365,000 LGBT Oklahomans. Our producer is Chris Moyer, Cimarron Alliance Board Co-Chairs are Randall Marsh and Catherine Primus. Lisa Pitsiri is our announcer. From all of us at Cimarron Alliance and Oklahoma Inside Out, I'm Scott J. Hamilton thanking you for joining us. Until next time, hang on to the vision of a fair and just Oklahoma. Oklahoma Inside Out is a production of Cimarron Alliance. Central Oklahoma's preeminent LGBT advocacy and education organization. If you have a topic you would like to hear discussed or a person who you would like to hear interviewed, please call 405-495-9300 or email oklahomainsideout at cimarronalliance.org. Please feel free to share the link to this broadcast with your friends. 